Hi, so welcome to lesson number one, module seven of the Big Data and Hadoop Developer course. So in this particular lesson, we will be introducing Hive. So before we go ahead with the lesson, let's have a quick recap of the previous module. So in the previous module, we have learned about the scripting tool called Pig. We understood the need of Pig. We compared it with MapReduce. And we even ran our famous word count example with Pig. And then we had an extensive set of lessons on the various Pig operations that can be performed. And we also discussed the advanced features such as user-defined functions in Pig. So in this particular lesson, we will be understanding what exactly is Hive and where it was developed and how it is used in the day-to-day -day analytics procedure and what are some of the limitations of Hive. So to think about Hive, it was originated as an internal project in Facebook. So Facebook was the company who invented Hive. Later, it was adopted in Apache as an open source project. So let's have a look at why Facebook exactly made a decision to invent something like Hive. So when Facebook started as a company, they were having a very small, small user database. And, and, and as the years grew by, the number of users in the da database started growing and growing. So ultimately, what happened was that Facebook adopted uh, Hadoop as their uh, system for analysis. However, every day, Facebook faced a challenge wherein they had to run close to 75,000 ad hoc queries on this entire data. So most of the engineers who were at Facebook were coming from the RDBMS background and they were pretty much familiar with the SQL queries that were written. Now the data was coming from multiple sources and it was dumped into Hadoop and engineers were asked to write queries, these ad hoc queries to query this data. The problem, however, was that all the queries needed to be written in MapReduce because MapReduce was the only way. So the SQL engineers found it very difficult to interact with the Hadoop since all their queries need to be converted into MapReduce and written. And, and that was quite, quite challenging. And also thinking about bringing an RDBMS solution in Hadoop was completely out of question since Hadoop is a place where an RDBMS cannot fit with its traditional structure and schema. So if you look at this slide, you will get an idea of what Facebook book was facing. So they were collecting data and stored in Oracle databases by nightly jobs. Usually they were using hand coded Python or ETL to transform this data. Now the real challenge was that their data grew from a couple of GBs to one terabyte per day in 2007. So you can see the massive amount of data they get like more than 300 million photos each day and 70,000 queries needed to be done on this massive amount of data. Now, uh, querying this data by writing a MapReduce code was the problem. And the solution that, that was adopted by Facebook and developed was, was called Hive. So Hive is in fact a, a query engine. Well, it is not a database to be precise. Many people will believe that Hive is, is a database. Well, Hive is not a database. Hive, to put it simply, is a query engine. So what Hive does is that it presents you with an interactive shell where you can, can write queries in a language called Hive query language. And these, these queries will be converted into MapReduce job and ran, run in the background and given you the result. So much like Pig, where it converts your Pig script into a MapReduce job, Hive also converts your queries into MapReduce job. The difference being Hive allows you to write queries which are almost similar to your SQL queries. So for Hadoop to be truly accepted and used across industries, it needs to connect with all the technologies. Now we know that whether you are working in a small company or a very large company, 
always and always there is a huge demand for database developers and your production engineers most of them are familiar with sql or rdbms on the other hand if you look at java or map reduce that is not something which is so popular and adaptable so industry wise for the wider adaptability of hadoop something which looks like sql was a must and it allows users who do not have skill in java or map reduce to take advantage of its features so much like pig what hive also does is that it create a, a data warehousing rep repository on hadoop and allows you to query the data st stored there through a much familiar interface now hive was actually created by a facebook by a team of engineers assessed led by jeff hammerbacher and as a quick introduction hive provides Hadoop with the connect into RDBMS world and provides a SQL language known as Hive Query Language. Well, even though Hive has a language called Hive Query Language, it is pretty much similar to your structured query language. So what exactly is Hive? Hadoop organizes and stores huge amount of structured, semi-structured and unstructured data where Hive is used to structure explore and analyze data and produce analytics insights to uh, for aiding business decisions now hive can query data with an sql based language like hive ql and usually when you interact with hive the hadoop complexity is hidden in the background so for example if i give the hive interface to an RDBMS person, he may not even come to know that he is interacting with Hadoop because he can write all his regular queries such as select star, select count distance, much the same way he writes in a RDBMS. And also, Hive is also called as the data warehousing system inside Hadoop. Now, Hive is a data warehouse query tool built on top of Hadoop and you don't necessarily need to know Java and Hadoop knowledge. However, if you have Java knowledge, you can write user defined functions in Java and make use of that inside Hive. This is pretty much similar to what we learned in the pig lesson. Now, as we know, Hive has a unique language called Hive query language. Well, I should say 95 percentage of the Hive query language is exactly similar to your structured query language. And whenever Hive lacks a particular functionality, you can always add it with the user defined functions. So let's say where Hive is actually used. In fact, the tool Hive is so popular that it is used across industries such as retail finance entertainment and e-commerce and the major use of hive is for creating faster queries for reporting data mining business intelligence visualization and analytics now when you have your data which is in structured format the first requirement must be to query the data any structured data which is in a table is not at all useful if you lack the power to query the data and that is exactly what hive gives you with so here let's have a quick comparison of hive and pig where in pig you you have procedural syntax and hive has declarative syntax what does that mean is in pig you you write it in a scripting language where, wherein you are mostly into creating relations which is in a st stored procedure but when you come to hive here you have the de declarative syntax much like your st structured query language well pig is a, a tool of choice for pro programmers and hive is mostly loved by analyst folks in pig a concept called, called partition is not supported whereas in hive you can can have partitions we will have a de detailed look at partitions partition is a concept uh, by, by which you can de divide a table into, into further tables and in pig you don't have have a server and hive comes with an optional thrift server uh, pig doesn't provide, provide a web interface whereas in hive has an optional web interface and 
One key difference is that in pair you do not have the JDBC or DBC connectivity. That that may, means I cannot connect pick directly with a RDBMS import solution. Imagine that you have, have a database such as Oracle and you want to fetch a table and store it directly inside pig. Well, this is, is impossible because pig doesn't lack pig la lacks that particular JDBC or DBC connectivity. When I use Hive, what I can do is that I can use a tool called uh, you can always ha have Oracle at one end and then I can use a tool called Scoop to be in the middle and I can directly con connect to my, to my Oracle, pull the data and dump it in my Hive using, using my JDBC or DBC connectivity. In PIG, we doesn't really sub support this and Hive, uh, it is very much uh, supported and PIG, PIG, PIG is uh, usually for uh, analyst folks and Hive if is suitable for data warehousing operations. Now, this is another slide which actually has the same information that we have, have discussed before, before, wherein you can see what are the limitations of PICs such as a lack of server, web interface and JDBC, ODBC support, wherein Hive has almost all of these features built in. Now, let's also compare our Hive with RDBMS because even though Hive looks like an RDBMS, it is not an RDBMS precisely. In RDBMS, we have a concept called schema on right. That means once you create a schema in RDBMS, when you load the data into the table, the schema is checked and then, then only written. In Hive, you have something called, called schema on read. That means if you create a table inside Hive, you can load as much data as you want and Hive is not going to verify the schema of your data when you are loading. But when you are re reading the data, the schema is very verified. And well, RDBMS is not so scalable and very costly, whereas Hive is easily scalable and cheap since it runs on our uh, already running Hadoop cluster. And in RDBMS, you can, you can read and write many, many times. Well, in Hive, you have the write only read many, many concept of Hadoop. And in RDBMS, most very importantly, you have record level updates, insertions, and deletions. Where in Hive, since all Hive does is the, the manipulation of the underlying Hadoop data, you cannot have record level updations, deletions or transactions. The data is treated as a single file. And RDBMS, you have both OLTP and OLAP. And in case of Hive, mostly OLTP is not supported since Hive is not a real-time tool. But however, OLAP is supported. Now, having said all about this, let's, let's wind up the lesson by discussing the limitations of Hive. Now, Hive is not designed for your OLTP system. The reason for that is most of the Hive queries are really, really slow because ultimately Hive has to convert your query into a MapReduce job and it has to be executed on the massive amount of data that you store in HDFS. So since Hive is quite slow, it is not suitable for OLTP and it doesn't support real-time queries and the latency of the queries are not acceptable in real-time cases and Hive doesn't support the low-level updates and deleted, you can only append the data inside Hive. So to wrap up in this particular lesson, we have learned the origination of Hive and where it is being used, the, the architecture and, and limitations of Hive. That's all for this lesson.